Sky Topic, casting director for The Challenge. You've been working with Muna Murray for 14 years. So from your end, what has it been like watching the franchise evolve over the years? And really, I think now it's more popular than ever. <laughs> I mean, just when I thought it couldn't get more popular, it gets more popular. I mean, you've got these committed fans who've been watching since, you know, Real World One and have been watching the show since then. And yeah, now it's, you know, pulling in, you know, such a unique landscape because it's casting from outside franchises across the global TV landscape. So, you know, it's including Big Brother, Survivor, Amazing Race, Love Island, like Warsaw Shore. So the result is that audiences can see contestants change over so many years and it adds, you know, that depth that you often don't see in like reality TV in the same way that I believe you see on our show. Mm -hmm, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when it was just uh, Road Rules All-Stars <laughs> back in the 90s. <laughs> they were good seasons. They were, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just like real world Road Rules, but I understand like the, the need to expand beyond that. Um, and uh, the, the most recent season, Spies, Lies, and Allies, I'm just going to read all the shows you guys pulled from. Yeah. The Real World, Are You the One, Big Brother, X on the Beach, Survivor, Love Island, Geordie Shore, War Shore, Paradise Hotel, Shipwreck, The Circle, Too Hot to Handle, uh, Ultimate Beastmasters, and 12 Dates of Christmas. And these are also domestic international versions of these shows. <laughs> so, uh, how overwhelming does that make your job when you know you could just literally pull from any reality show around the world? I mean, it is so overwhelming because you know, you're not only trying to cast within the framework of the vets that, you know, have such a, um, you know, the audience and the fans love. So you really have to reach out to those names that are going to be able to onboard these new rookies from the other shows. You know, if English is their second language, do we have someone there who can help them navigate the politics of the game? So it is a ginormous job, um, especially at the beginning when we're trying to look at like what shows we can pull from. Um, but it's, it makes it, you know, really exciting. It is a giant jigsaw because like I said, you don't want to just throw someone in the house who really like doesn't have anyone to help any vet to sort of help them navigate that beginning of the game, which is obviously, you know, the very difficult part of the game when they're trying to find their feet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how many of these shows do you watch? <laughs> um, I, I try to watch most of the, I mean, certainly the ones in English, um, you know, I watch the ones that I don't have the same kind of access to, uh, I watch like little, you know, pieces of them that I can find. I mean, we do long casting interviews with, um, cast. And if I'm unsure about someone, I will go back and re-interview them sometimes not even necessarily to show everyone. I just like will suddenly wake up and be like, wait, does Gabo know how to navigate this house? Is his English strong enough? Do I feel like he has it? And I'll kind of go back and do a quick re-interview. And, you know, obviously, you know, he made the cast and he was great, but, you know, do, can he do that? You know, and then, you know, the cast members like Nam, for example, you know, he did it, he had a tough time on his first season and we really felt like he deserved like that second go um, on Spies, Lies and Allies. Mm -hmm. Well, for these uh, seasonal themes, uh, I guess, what, what is the process? Do you, are you, are you told of the theme and then you're just casting for the theme or do sometimes um, you, you just have people like on the back burner that you've seen previously, but were not cast and you might think like, oh, that's like, they, they might make sense for this particular season or you, you make suggestions um... like maybe we could do like this type of theme. Right. Everything is happening simultaneously in a way, like the games team will be starting to work out the games, what formats. Sometimes I might be casting for a, a couple of different format ideas that I feel like, you know, we may be working on. But yes, obviously the format really um, tells me who we want to cast. Um, and sometimes if, you know, the format doesn't work, we'll have to put someone who you know, is a great name, you know, on the shelf for our season and, um, you know, revisit them. So yes, the format definitely dictates the casting, but, you know, if there is an amazing name that we really feel like we need, there is an often way to sort of bring them into the mix. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, well, like you were saying before, you know, sometimes you bring people back, you have a lot of recurring personalities and 
so they have their own, I guess, continuing storylines over different seasons. Uh, so how do you keep that in mind when you're also casting, but maybe that person doesn't make sense for this season right now, you know? So we, like you said, like put them on the back burner for now. <laughs> right, right. I mean, the challenge is, you know, it's a, it's a cinematic world. It's very like the Marvel universe. We need to rotate our villains, our heroes, our underdogs from season to season. And obviously that does begin with casting. Um, if I know that there is a story that feels unfinished from the previous season and I, and I feel like the audience really needs to see that, um, you know, like settle, I definitely want to lean into that. That's not something I'm going to jump away from. Um, and then, you know, sometimes, like I said, a big name that may have been on multiple seasons, um, you know, like a Wes, you know, we may want to just put, you know, uh, off a season so that there's an excited return, you know, like a Durrell or a Teresa, so that there's, um, you know, some sort of excitement about seeing those really big name vets come back into the franchise. Yeah, sometimes you need to take a break. From yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they need a break. It is, I mean, it's really a very uh, taxing experience. I mean, ultimately that cross that finish line and they're like, this is the best game in the world, but it takes a long time for them before they're even standing in front of TJ, you know, getting through the casting process is, is a massive effort. And um, it is, it is really intense for our cast and they do an amazing job. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, I, I know that reality shows also have alternates on standby in case someone falls out for whatever reason, especially, you know, during COVID, if someone has positive, right. they, they, they're out. So um, what is your process for, uh, I guess, casting alternates and determining uh, who to bring in as a replacement if such a case arises? Right. So basically, like my initial outreach is normal. Our initial outreach is normally like 300. Then that sort of whittles down over the casting interview batches. And uh, we sort of get to about sort of 65 names we feel happy with. And there's a lot of different versions within those names of who will work. So, you know, if you're going to lose a cast member, you may end up losing three because a lot of the storylines that you may have been thinking that would be pivoted off that person won't happen because they're not there. So the alt, the alt situation, I normally have about 10 people sort of, and you know, that's also in a little bit like in a movement as well, um, just standing by. We won't fly that many names out to the location. We'll fly maybe four um, names just in case something happens from, you know, departure to, you know, standing in front of TJ. Um, and they will sort of stand by in case we need to pull them into the game, mm -hmm. you know, but I have had to call, you know, obviously we didn't have to do this for Spies, Eyes and Allies, but I have had to call people in the past who are just sitting at home and be like, okay, you need to get on a plane now. <laughs> and they're like tomorrow, frantically yeah. packing, they frantically pack their bags and they frantically unpack their bags in disappointment and then they're repacking. I mean, I imagine a lot of people just have a go bag ready in case they get the call from you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Well, they do. And then they kind of like, oh, I'm unpacking Sky. I'm like, I know I'm not going to make it. I'm like, just hold on to that bag. And then, and then they do. So <laughs> I always uh, tell the alts, like, you know, better to, better to be uh, in it. You never know. Mm hmm. Um, well, lastly, do you have a theme that the show hasn't done yet that you, you would like to see done in the future? I know you've said like no, no vets, no, no like there all vets. Are so even though fans want it. <laughs> great themes. I mean, I would love to see, um, you know, a vet rookie season again. Like, um, you know, obviously we explored that in Battle of... Um, uh, the champions, you know, uh, the season that CT and Ashley won. Um, but I think that would be a great uh, one to revisit. You know, I mean, it wasn't an amazing season, Bloodlines, but I, I feel like, you know, exploring that family aspects of things is really fun, friends, you know. So I'd love to see that where like rookies are sort of onboarded with a vet, you know, that the audience knows and may root for because of that. And I always think that's a really fun thing. Awesome. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, Sky, it was great speaking with you. Thanks for your time. And we'll see you back here in a little bit. Thank you so much. Thank you.